there, this is a video for geometry, chapter 3, section 2, angles and parallel lines. In the previous section, we were talking about transversals and what those look like. And so in this case, we're still dealing with transversals. However, um, as we stated in the previous lesson, a transversal is um, any line that intersects two other lines in two distinct points. So we can see here in the diagram that the black line is a transversal that intersects these two lines in two distinct points. But the um, new thing for this lesson is that the two lines that the transversal is intersecting happen to be parallel. And we indicate parallel by using these um, pink, red arrows, um, indicating that the two blue lines are parallel. So we have a postulate. And remember that a postulate is kind of like a theorem, but it does not need to be proven. It's assumed that it's true. So we're going to start with this postulate, which basically is the corresponding angles postulate. And it states that if two lines are parallel, so these lines are parallel, and they're cut by a transversal, which is the black line, then each pair of corresponding angles is congruent. And so we learned in the last section what corresponding angles were. So we have them here color-coded. Angle 1 and angle 3 are corresponding angles. Angle 7 and angle 5 are corresponding angles. And so we have over here that angle 1 is congruent to angle 3, and angle 5 is congruent to angle 7. And then, of course, 6 and 8 are congruent because they're corresponding angles. And also 2 and 4 are congruent because they're corresponding angles. So that's this postulate, is that if the two lines are parallel cut by transversal, each pair of corresponding angles is congruent. So we're going to go ahead and see what that means for us in this example. It says, in the figure, the measurement of angle 5 is 72. Um, so that's this angle right here, angle 5 is 72. Find the measure of each angle, and then tell, with, tell which postulates or theorems that you used to determine your answer. So, let me get some color over here. So we're going to start with angle 4. And as we look at angle 4 and angle 5, they are corresponding angles. They're color-coded there, too. So angle 5 and angle 4 are corresponding angles. So if angle 5 equals 72, since we know that angle 4 and angle 5 are corresponding, that means that um, they're congruent. So the measurement of angle 4 would also equal 72, and that's because of the corresponding angles postulate. All right? So then our next um, question is part B. And in part B, they're asking us about um, angle 2. Now, angle 2 is not corresponding with angle 5, but we know that angle 2 and angle 4 are vertical angles. And since we already learned in part A that angle 4 is 72, then that would mean that the measurement of angle 2 is also 72 because of vertical angles. So if you would like to do A, B, and C, then we'll move on to the next um, example. Okay. All right. Okay, and so now we have another theorem. This, in this case, we're talking about alternate interior angles theorem. Now remember that a theorem has to be proven. You can't assume that it's true. So um, I'm going to show you a proof here of the alternate interior angles theorem. And as you can see, what I'm trying to prove in this theorem is that alternate interior angles, like corresponding angles, are congruent. So I'll see here that we've got A and B are parallel. We've got our arrows indicating such. T is the transversal. And I'm going, I'm going to try to prove that angle 4 and angle 5, which are alternate interior angles, and angle 3 and angle 6, which are also alternate interior angles, are congruent. That's what I'm trying to prove. So we have a really short proof here. And it says in step 1, we're going to start with our given. So A is parallel to B with transversal T. So that's given. And then we have angle 2 and angle 4 congruent. So if you look at the diagram, angle 2 and angle 4 are corresponding angles. And also 6 and 8 in step 2. 6 and 8 are also corresponding angles. So I'm going to put my reason here for corresponding angles postulate. And then in step 3, it says 5 is congruent to 2. And if you look at the diagram, angle 5 and angle 2 are vertical angles. 
It also states that 8 and 3 are congruent. And if you look at the diagram again, 8 and 3 are also vertical angles. So in step 3, I'm going to say vertical angles. Theorem. That was a theorem from before. And so then my last step requires a, some me trying to show you here what's happening. In the last step, we get 5 is congruent to 4. So just so that you know where that comes from, this is actually the transitive property because we know that 5 is congruent to 2 from step 3. And then in turn, 2 was congruent to 4 in step 2. Therefore, we can get rid of the middleman, which is angle 2. And I don't want to write all over my diagram here now that I think about that. It makes it look really sloppy. But anywho, so 5 goes to 2, 2 goes to 4. So you can get rid of the middleman. 5 goes to 4. And that's what this states right here. In a similar fashion, we have in steps 2 and 3, we have that 6 goes to 8, and then 8 goes to 3. So again, the middleman is 8. We get him out of the way, and 6 goes to 3, which is exactly what this is stating here. So in step 4, we're going to put transitive property. And we can even write that's coming from steps 2 and 3. And that concludes our proof because we wanted to prove that 4 was congruent to 5, and we got that. We wanted to prove that 3 was congruent to 6, and we got that. And so now we have a proof that demonstrates that alternate interior angles are, in fact, congruent. So now we're going to formulate that here. This is the first of my, um, of my theorems. You are, there are three here. Now, again, you can prove consecutive interior and alternate exterior angle theorems in a similar fashion. They're not very long proofs. Um, and they might even come up in your homework as an assignment to do later. But we've already proven the first one, alternate interior angles, which basically states that if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, like you have in the diagram here, then each pair of alternate interior angles is congruent. They're color-coded here, angle 1 and 3, angle 2 and 4 would be congruent. We also have two other theorems. We have consecutive interior angles theorem. And again, if you remember what consecutive interior angles are, uh, we have two parallel lines cut by a transversal. Then each pair of consecutive interior angles is not congruent, but supplementary. So consecutive interior means supplementary. So that means that angle 1 and angle 2 are consecutive interior. So they're supplementary. And angle 3 and angle 4 are also consecutive interior. So they're supplementary. And basically, in case you'd forgotten what it means to be supplementary, is that the measurement of angle 1 and the measurement of angle 2 equals 180. So I have put that there for you as well. And then, of course, we have alternate exterior angle theorem. And the alternate exterior angle theorem, um, like the alternate interior angle theorem, two lines parallel, cut by a transversal. Each pair of alternate exterior angles is also congruent. And again, they're color-coded. Five and seven are alternate exterior and therefore congruent. Six and eight are alternate exterior and therefore also congruent. Again, all of these theorems and postulates only apply if the two lines are parallel first. Okay, we have to know that they're parallel before we can assume any of these theorems are true. Okay, so then how do we deal with that? Here's example two. Again, in your textbook, it has a nice little map with pretty little roads and parks and whatnot. But I just drew the basic structure that you needed for the, for the diagram. So it says Redding Lane, and I abbreviated that RL. Redding Lane and Creek Road, CR, are parallel streets. So we got these two lines parallel that intersect Park Road, and here's Park Road, the transversal, along the west side of Wendell Park. Um, so the park is in here somewhere. Um, and it tells us that if the measurement of angle 1 equals 118, they would like us to find the measurement of angle 2, which is over here. So the measurement of angle 1 and the measurement of angle 2 should be the same, because angle 1 and angle 2 are alternate interior angles, and we just showed that alternate interior angles are congruent. So the measurement of angle 2 should also equal 118. Um, and in this case, it didn't ask us to show what theorem we were using, but um, we're going to go ahead and put alternate interior angles theorem is what we're going to be using for that. All righty. So um, then we're going to go to, um, you have a do-it-yourself question right here. Again, we're using the same diagram. Refer to the diagram to find each angle measure. 
And again, in the do-it-yourself question, you actually need to include the theorem or posture that you're using. Um, and so go forth and prosper with that one. And then we will go on to our, I believe, last example here. And it says, yes, that's, did I go too far? Oh, here we were. Okay, so now we're going to go here. So example three. And it says in ejemplo press, like how I switch it on you there. Okay, lost the cap to my pen. There it is. All right, use the figure at the right to find the indicated variable. Explain your reasoning. So it says here if the measurement of angle 4 equals 2x minus 17, and the measurement of angle 1 equals 85, find x. So the two angles that are in play here are angle 4 and angle 1. So the first thing I want to do is go to my diagram and find angle 4 and angle 1. So here's angle 4 and here's angle 1. And they are not, um, they are not um, any type of special angles. Um, they're not alternate interior because angle 1 is exterior, angle 4 is interior, um, and so on. So, but we can do a two-step process where I know that angle 1 and angle 3 are congruent because they are vertical angles. So if angle 1 is congruent to angle 3, that means that the measurement of angle 3 is also 85 because angle 1 is 85 and they're vertical angles. Um, and then when I look at 3 and 4, these two angles um, are consecutive interior. And because they're consecutive interior, they are going to be supplementary, which means they're going to add up to 180. So 2x minus 17 plus 85 should equal 180. And then we just do a little bit of algebra. And we can get our answer. So let's see, 85 first. We're going to combine 85. Minus 17 is 68. Then I want to move the 68 to the other side. So 180 minus 68 is 112. And if I divide that by 2, x will equal 1, or sorry, 56. And that is how I find. Um, so the two theorems that we use, what does it explain your reasoning? Vertical angles, and then we use the consecutive interior angles theorem. Consecutive interior angles theorem. So first we use the vertical angles theorem, and then we use the consecutive interior angles theorem. So now we're going to do part B. Part B says... Find y if the measurement of angle 3 equals 4y plus 30 and the measurement of angle 7 equals 7y plus 6. And again, the first thing I'm going to do is try to locate angle 3 and angle 7 because those are the two angles that are in play. So when I look at my diagram, angle 3 is here, angle 7 is there, and it is clear to me that they are alternate interior angles. And by the alternate interior angles theorem, alternate interior angles theorem, we know that those two angles should be congruent or equal. So that means that 4y plus 30 should equal 7y plus 6. And then again, we're going to go to algebra to help us solve um, for y. I'm going to move the 4y for both sides. That's going to give me 30 equals 7 minus 4 is 3y plus 6. Subtract 6 from both sides. 3y equals 30 minus 6 is 24. And then divide both sides by 3. And y equals ocho. 8 for our answer there. So, um, again, the, the reasoning in this case was the alternate interior angles theorem. Awesome. So now... You're going to go here and try A and B for do-it-yourself number three with this diagram. And then that's actually the last of your do-it-yourself questions. But I do need you to um, write this down in your notes, the perpendicular transversal theorem. That we don't have any examples for it or any do-it-yourself questions for it. 
but it is important that you understand the theorem. And it says basically that if you're in a plane, so both all of these lines have to be in the same plane, if a line is perpendicular to one or two parallel lines, then it is perpendicular to the other. So that might sound kind of weird, but if a line is perpendicular to one or two parallel lines, the line that's perpendicular is T. It's perpendicular to two other lines that are parallel. So basically what I put down here in a more um, symbolic format is if A is parallel to B and A is perpendicular to T, which is why it has a little perpendicular symbol here, then by default T is also perpendicular to B. That's what this perpendicular transversal theorem is um, talking about. So once you write that down and finish the do-it-yourself questions, then you will be done for your with your lesson for today. And I will see you in class. And thank you for watching.